I cannot tell the truth or lie. I can only recount the events in my memory. That is the statement from the narrator, who then tells the story of Lernert, a man who decided to live a simple life on barren land because he was tired of the hustle and bustle of city life. Lernert soon realized that living in the desert was very difficult, so he created Susan, a robot that would help and accompany him on his adventures and take care of him. However, he did not anticipate that the sand could damage Susan's body, making her unable to walk. Lernert was forced to dismantle Susan so they could continue their journey together. Even though Susan's battery was completely drained, Lernert promised to find a new power source and body for her. Susan remembered that this promise was made by Lernert 982 days ago. Although Susan was inactive, Lernert continued to talk to her out of loneliness. When they stopped to rest, Lernert remembered how he and Susan used to travel out of town, starting with making schedules and routes, and then walking while enjoying the surroundings. Lernert admitted that he still did not know how long it would take to repair Susan, but he assured her he would do everything possible to make her functional again. When he needed water, Lernert used a sophisticated tool where he only needed to insert a pipe at a water source and turn the lever. If no water came out, he had to walk about 10 steps in another direction and try again until water flowed, which he collected in a bottle. For food, Lernert consumed plants found in the desert. One day was very surprising. Lernert suddenly found a girl lying helpless with foam at her mouth. When the girl woke up, Lernert gave her a brief lesson about plants, showing that there are two types of Cernyptus which are safe to consume, whereas the dactyl plant she had consumed was highly toxic. The two plants had almost no difference, but upon closer inspection, Cernyptus had a green ring indicating it was safe. Lernert introduced himself and his robot Susan, but the girl responded minimally, seemingly reluctant to give her name. Therefore, Lernert suggested they pretend they had never met, and agreeing, the girl walked away. As he continued his journey, Lernert found a pile of garbage and began to search through it, hoping to find items that could be used to repair Susan. At one point, he tried to open a can to see its contents, but to his shock, the can exploded. Several hours later, the girl returned and found Lernert lying unconscious with a head injury. Instead of waking him up, she examined Susan and Lernert's belongings and ate the remaining plants he had. She also read a picture book by Lernert titled The Quest for the Key, which told the story of a solitary samurai named Todd. In the story, a young man arrives at Todd's residence to deliver a message from a king, explaining that the king had sent him across Crystal Lake in his fastest boat. The girl seemed very interested, but soon put the book down, removed the shrapnel, and finally bandaged Lernert's head. The next day, Lernert woke up with a bandage on his head. The girl explained everything, including reading the book and feeling very sorry because it was private. In return, she introduced herself as a traveler named Roller. After eating, Lernert resumed examining other items in the pile of garbage until he finally found a battery. He immediately connected it to Susan, and as she started to power up, the robot mentioned several times that Crystal Lake is near. Roller speculated that this might mean the lake was indeed nearby. Soon, Susan reactivated and expressed her longing for Lernert. Seeing the bandage on his head, Susan insisted on checking it, but fortunately, everything was fine. Roller reluctantly interrupted their conversation to ask if what Susan had said about the lake was true. Unfortunately, the battery ran out, causing Susan to shut down again. Roller told Lernert that he did not need to keep the lake a secret and revealed herself as a believer in it. However, Lernert did not understand what Roller was talking about, even though he had written about the lake in his book. Despite living in the desert for months, Lernert had never found the lake and the lake in his book was purely fictional. His only goal in his journey was to find spare parts for Susan. Although he could find them in the city, it was expensive, and Lernert wanted to distance himself from urban life. Nevertheless, Rolla revealed that she believed in the existence of Crystal Lake, and asked Lernert to join her in the search, as he knew a lot about the desert. Rolla's face lit up with joy when Lernert agreed to her request. Throughout their journey, they gathered edible plants. Due to her limited knowledge of desert plants, Rola was tasked with finding water as Lernert had taught her. 
Despite the difficulty and frustration, Rola continued searching until she spotted a glimmering light in the distance. Excitedly, she reported it and intended to approach the light, but Lernert warned her against it, as traveling in the desert without a filled water bottle would be dangerous. Ignoring him, Rola left the faucet and bottle behind, only to find that the light had disappeared when she looked again. The next day, their journey continued, and Rola found a plant she recognized. She picked some leaves and suggested that Lernert mix them with drinking water to improve its taste. Lernert was skeptical, but upon trying it, he was pleasantly surprised by the delicious flavor. Rola quickly picked more leaves to add to their bottles, and they continued on their way. One day they encountered a stranger walking in the opposite direction. From their conversation, they learned that the stranger had been traveling for three weeks. Rola invited him to join them, but he did not respond and continued on his way, explaining that he kept moving because he disliked his current location and sought a place where he could feel truly comfortable regardless of direction, rather than following others' desires. Shortly after the stranger left, Rola expressed her discomfort with Lernert's protective behavior, not wanting to be seen as a weak girl. Lernert wisely explained that they were a team and there was nothing wrong with protecting each other. Their journey continued and Lernert shared that he often thought of other people when meeting someone new. The stranger they had encountered reminded him of a former neighbor who always pruned the bushes until only branches remained, while Rola reminded him of his mother. That night, after setting up camp, Rola saw Lernert working on his comic and expressed her eagerness to read it. The next morning, Rola decided to read the comic while Lernert was still asleep. In the new chapter, Todd gains a companion, a woman named Lady Ray on his dangerous journey. Todd admires Lady Ray for her wisdom and determination. Before Lernert woke up, Rola quickly put the book back. Later, they were seen examining garbage. During this moment, Rola found a cylindrical object. Upon further inspection, Lernert realized it was a half-filled polycarbine fusion cell, which was far superior to a battery. With just half its power, it could keep Susan operational for a lifetime they immediately connected it to Susan. As expected, Susan powered up and asked Lernert about his promise to build a new body for her. Regretfully, Lernert explained that he had not yet found a suitable body, but assured Susan he would soon. Without delay, Rola asked Susan about Crystal Lake, which had been mentioned earlier as being nearby. Susan confirmed this, but noted that their current location was now farther away, because they had been heading in the wrong direction. Seeing Lernert's confusion, Susan explained that Crystal Lake was part of her programming. She then provided directions and details about the distance they needed to cover, estimating that it would take more than two weeks to reach the lake. As they continued their journey, Susan advised Lernert to keep his heart rate at 150, but unfortunately, Lernert had sold the measuring device they needed. Susan also guided them on the correct path to avoid getting lost and even managed their rest times and food intake to prevent exhaustion. Susan's sophisticated algorithms calculated variables affecting them every nanosecond. Her systems remained active even when she was offline, allowing her to calculate the offline duration. For instance, if Susan had been offline for 96 hours, she would express longing for Lernert upon reactivation. The following day, Lernert calculated that they had walked 39 kilometers Susan recalled that when she had a body, she and Lernert used to travel three kilometers a day. Therefore, Lernert and Rola had to conserve energy, simultaneously searching for food and water while walking. Susan then warned them that long journeys were hazardous because most desert plants had low caloric value, insufficient to meet their survival needs. At this moment, Lernert finally admitted two concerns. First, based on Susan's calculations, they might not reach the lake because the closer they got, the fewer edible plants they would find, making it impossible to sustain the journey. Second, Lernert believed they did not have to follow Susan's predictions rigidly as they were merely estimates based on calculations. The two adventurers agreed to continue their journey to find Crystal Lake. Soon they discovered that most of the plants were the poisonous dactyl. Susan advised them to start rationing their remaining food as it was the only solution. As they resumed their journey, 
Rola found a pile of garbage that seemed useful for building Susan's body. However, Susan insisted that this was not a priority since the main goal was to find the lake. While this was true, it was not entirely accurate because the ultimate goal was to achieve happiness, something Susan did not understand since happiness was not part of her programming. Rola then asked Lernert to sit down, expressing her feelings for him without any programming. Rola's point was that everyone, even robots, deserved happiness. Now out of food, and with no closer or safer route according to Susan, returning was not an option. Susan's only suggestion was to find edible plants as soon as possible. Shortly after, Lernert and Rola discovered an unfamiliar plant not found in Susan's data. Based on its shape and pattern, Susan indicated it resembled pombal beet, a toxic plant with yellow skin and pink stripes. If it were pombal beet, consuming it would be fatal within 30 seconds. However, Rola was confident it was a different plant and daringly ate it, asking Susan to count down 30 seconds. When the time passed, Rola was fine and felt relieved that they had finally found food. They gathered all the mysterious plants to take with them. Several days later, Lernert and Rola finally arrived at Crystal Lake, marveling at its beauty. Rola ran to the lake's edge, followed by Lernert, who ignored Susan's advice to test the water for toxins. Over time, Lernert learned to get food from the lake, such as fish. He thanked Susan for guiding them to the lake. Lernert also examined Susan and discovered some things he hadn't programmed, concluding that they were codes from the replacement parts found during their desert journey possibly including a memory chip containing the coordinates of Crystal Lake, indicating that someone had visited the lake before them. Lernert explained that he had reprogrammed her to set her own main objectives, and Susan would no longer miss Lernert. Additionally, Lernert confessed that he never truly intended to fulfill his promise of rebuilding Susan's body, fearing she might leave him one day. Susan accepted this, but noted that leaving her master was not part of her programming. Lernert and Rola then started gathering wood to build Susan's body. In another moment, Lernert revealed the ending of his book, where Todd sacrifices himself for the king's life. As Todd's body lay in the middle of the room, Lady Ray suddenly arrived and connected a golden tube from her body to Todd's. When the tube glowed, Todd came back to life. The film concluded with a revelation from the narrator, who was actually Susan herself. She narrated that Lernert and Rola stayed by the lake for six weeks before returning to the city to spread the news about Crystal Lake. Most people didn't believe them and thought Lernert and Rola were crazy for talking about the waves and abundant fish. However, some decided to visit, and now more than 200 people along with 20 robots live by the lake. And that's it for the story series of this film. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribe, like and share. See you in the next video. Goodbye.